Okay, so I'm Carmen Forbes, and the topic I'm presenting today is random school drug testing. And um, I'm thinking to lower the number of random school drug testing because I know that you can't completely stop that because that's up to the school to decide. But um, what I'm presenting is a solution, or it's not a solution, it's an awareness, and it's to make students more aware of their rights and being able to say no to school drug testing if it's not like part of their state's law for it. And for most schools, it's whether if they're in like after school activities, extracurriculars, and some sort of parking passes. And at HSC, those are the rules here, parking passes. Their names are put into a random system that drug tests students like randomly. But at HSC, some of the problems I've seen is that most, um, what's it called, like administrators are targeting students here and they find students that they think are like using drugs or whatever section and they drug test those students and I've seen that actually really frequently a lot of people in like certain groups and it's like the whole group and um so let me just look at you I did a poll on Twitter actually because social media is a great way to get your like ideas out and um, as it shows, 11% voted to continue random school drug testing, and 89% voted to, or to stop it. And um, so I think that another problem that is happening here is that after students are drug tested, if they fail it, then they're given consequences that affect their academics. And they're given ISS for up to a week expulsion. Um, they could possibly pay a fine or um, they have ISS and that's like in school suspension but you're still out of your classes. And um, I see that as a problem because parents should be able to do their jobs and not necessarily the school and I feel as if students are at school and they're giving their time here then it's the parents job to decide what's going on outside of it. Um, these are some definitions on, um, this gives like some prize pools and stuff. So schools spend up to $12,500 on drug testing a year. And I feel like that could actually be used on a lot of other things that could make the school better. Therefore, like as the presentation for this parking lot, I probably hit like 10 potholes when I'm leaving a day. They could try fixing those instead of getting kids in ISS. Um, Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Carmen. <coughs> Nobody wants to touch this one. Right? <laughs> I'll touch it. Um, I I really like this topic because I've not heard it yet. And I just sure I can grab a second. Um, and you did a really nice job of, like, I think you were well prepared and you spent a lot of time practicing. I would have really liked uh, two things. One, just because I also teach, watch your grammar and your okay. spelling on your slides. Like, I get, I get very squirreled by that. If I see it, I'm like, I get fixated on it and then I'm not hearing what you're saying. So be sure to proofread your stuff. Um, I would have really liked for you to take the data a little deeper. So the, the Twitter poll is great, and I think that that's a, a smart way to get information quickly, but is that reflective of like the greater community? Is that reflective of HSC schools? I mean, is there a way to do a survey of your classmates <coughs> or, or teachers or of faculty within this building? Because I think um, if your data is skewed, it, your argument's gonna be yeah. less credible. You're gonna be more credible if you can say, I surveyed a sample of the city of Fishers and they all agreed that we should reduce the drug testing. I also think that having costs that are specific to HSC would have made your argument a little yeah. stronger. Um, it's fine to take nationwide statistics, but I think as a school, I think all that information and budget information is available to you, so research that a bit. Um, I also would have been curious, out of testing, and this I don't know if is available to you, but if you could be able to indicate out of how many tests they show how year, how many actually test positive? Yeah. You know, how many how many kids are we actually incurring this? And how do faculty go about identifying who needs a drug test? Because I don't know a lot about this and I was on the dance team, which was not really considered a sport back when I was in this building and so we didn't get drug tested, yeah. but I don't really know who does or yeah. why or what those grounds are. So take take the research of this a little bit further. Um, and I think that might help guide what your implementation plan looks like. Okay, thank you. I think too, um, you talked about like with the in-school suspension and things being 
kind of the the issue with when somebody does test positive, there's the option of what other options do you think they should go through? Is there some sort of like, um, not therapy, but some sort of help? Because yeah. obviously, if you're doing drugs and you're coming to school, that's not a good combo either. So you probably shouldn't, but you might need help. Yeah. And so rather than an in-school suspension where you are being taken away from your day-to-day -day routine, um, you know, what else there could be? And as I was reading, like, on the, like, statistics and stuff online, it said more than, like, most schools try to give, like, therapy or, like, something to help those students, but I noticed that, like, it just seems more, like, disciplinary and not so much, like, help. So that's that would be good thing for yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that that's a really good point. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking too, is we don't want to take away from the academic side. So what is kind of that yeah. solution? And I think that actually what you have in your implementation slide here is a lot of words, which yeah. you know, just moving forward would require to pair that down a little yeah. bit. There's more to work up there. But I think it's interesting because there is kind of that constant argument about the just say no, and then also, okay, well, kids are going to try things anyway, so yeah. how do we help make that not as much of a detrimental thing moving forward? You yeah. know, okay, okay, if that is going to be the case, what are some solutions to help, you know, uh, manage it and make sure that it doesn't affect school and make sure that they're not just being, you know, thrown into a padded room somewhere? Um, again, not, not, not encouraging it, but just trying to have a better understanding of, okay, if this is going to happen, how do we make it happen in the best way possible? Um, yeah. I, so then those kids don't get pigeonholed. Then. Yeah, exactly. That and then continue. I mean, it could promote continuing that. Yeah. That lifestyle. But yeah, I'm, I'm on the same with the grammar and stuff like the comma zero. Or the, yeah, there. I always put commas. Right. The right oh, version, oh, but oh, you're missing the apostrophe. Well, I mean, there's even some of the stuff from the template of the like that question at the bottom. Yeah, that is not supposed to be there. I don't know. So I did a right. lot of the, like the PowerPoint on my phone, and it like wouldn't let me like. Okay, well, just be mindful some of those things, stuff, right? Yeah. Because it really does. It damages your credibility for sure. It's like wow, this kid doesn't even care enough to insert whatever. And I know that's not true about you. Yeah. But that's definitely how it comes across, right? Yeah. Hey, the other thing on there that that I'm just like I'm not buying, right? All students are going to try drugs or drink alcohol at one point in their high school career, if not more. Um, you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah, it might be like wrong, but I mean, I am, like, you can't, you can't I'd say that, like, since I'm, like, a student in HSC, I see a lot more of, like, the things that go on. Okay, say a lot. Don't no, say all. Yeah, yeah. Or, okay, find us a piece of data that says, um, like, the balance of the yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. There's, okay. yeah. there's so I'm going to be the old stick in the mud in the room here, okay? <laughs> what you're talking about is testing against illegal drugs for the right to park in the school lots or participate in extracurricular activities. Those are not rights, they are privileges, mm -hmm. okay? Where you go with this, your audience are administrators who are held accountable for anything that goes wrong, okay? You talked about the cost of, of doing drug testing. If you don't do drug testing, I'm gonna bet your insurance costs triple, <laughs> okay? So, you know, there's, I, I like the presentation, I like where you're thinking, but there are some very realistic hurdles that you're ignoring. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I but overall, you spoke about well and things then. Yeah. 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 Like, I, all of us went to high school at one point. Like, we know what you're talking about, and mm -hmm. those things do go on, they have gone on forever. Mm -hmm. Right, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah. And they definitely happen in the building. And as teachers, it's something we are training on. And, you know, I love when you guys ask something about how do you identify students. Well, honestly, one of them is like when you see a kid in class who's not sober, right? I mean, like, that's one of the things, right? So, uh, and I think the thing, too, is like... Pardon the interruption, students and staff. All students need to go to smart period first. They will be released. Junior students will be released from smart period for the convocation. Thank you. Okay, so. Um, <laughs>
So, so right. I was wondering how do we decide? Oh, if you want to make a separate argument about like maybe we're going to utilize some of these things, right? That's almost like, I was going to go like force that, but I feel like that's just too like broad. Like I wanted to make sure something that was like doable. HFC, like sure. And I appreciate that effort. Um, I, I think though they're getting your your signals crossed a little bit. Yeah. Because um, Mike's right. I mean, to some extent, like we here are are caged in by the walls of the land, yeah. quite literally. Um, and so there's a responsibility as as people in education that like our, our so number one job here is to be safe, right? It's seven and yeah, it's three o'clock. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and so and so part of that has to do with <laughs> the bad guy um, with some of this stuff. So I, I, I think that like you have some, there's validity in some of the things that you're saying and I'm with you in that when you start talking early on about there are certain groups of kids who get targeted more so than others, um, but I don't think you're wrong about that. Yeah. Um, and that is, is a fascinating case study because yeah. I mean, I have it's like, it, it's like, a, like walls, we are going towards like walls that like students, sure. they're not sure. targeting unless well, it's like it's, suspicion. Right. And I could see that, but right. I feel like they use like the group of people that people hang out with that they're they're suspicious. Suspicious. Yeah. And I think that you can look into information. I, I think you can probably find like, data on that stuff too. Yeah. Because um, I, I, you're not wrong. That I have, I have yeah. students in class who've been drug tested like every semester, yeah. and then I have other students who have literally never been drug tested. Yeah. So tell me that it's random, and eh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, some of it is, but some of it is not. Some of it's by suspicion, yeah. but what is suspicion? And how how subjective mm -hmm. is that? Like, oh well, Carmen's friends with Casey, and Casey's a big druggie, so yeah. we better drug test Carmen too. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not sure that's that fly. So I think there might be some inroads there where you could look into mm -hmm. and, and take this. Um, and maybe that's that 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 maybe that's something that you could hone in on because yeah. why that's couldn't that's it be all. a training, a district wide webinar you watch that you create that yeah. teaches faculty? more of those parameters, like yeah. what is an acceptable reason? Mm -hmm. What does suspicion look like? How do you approach that conversation? Like maybe there's just more of a conversation about how yeah. that needs to happen there. Yeah. And yeah. Could Pat yeah. Mathis do about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, absolutely. So, I mean, here's the thing, like this, this because it's controversial, the reason that these guys were silent right, right away, right? Because um, uh, there's such a, it's such a skinny, skinny, skinny line between this is a legitimate thing and I want to bring light to it mm -hmm. and uh, I'm a kid who just wants to get away with some BS, mm -hmm. right? And I and I and I don't I don't know yeah. about you. I mean I've been for a few years and actually I, you know I think I think that you are have some legitimate points here but yeah. sometimes especially then when there are all these little airs and stuff like right now I'm like looking at the word HFD going that should be capitalized. Um, <laughs> or I need it is spelled wrong and there's not any punctuation on that sentence. Um, it, it all of that, especially for folks who don't know, know you at all, yeah. lean them toward this is just a kid who wants to do some drugs and get away with it. Right? Um, I do have a quick question, sorry, because I know you have to get going. Um, if a kid is caught with drugs here at school, do they call the police? Yes. They do yeah. call the police. Well, if they're illegal drugs. Yeah. Okay, so they call the police. Does I mean, so I guess what I'm saying is, it, it, it's, I don't know, is it better to have the school, now they're Kind, they're kind of involved and kind of help, or would you rather be on your own and now you're caught outside school? I, I don't know. So, because at least I, I feel like in most student situations, you would honestly rather get caught outside of school because at the school, if they find you, so then it's not only like your problem, like your parents will do that too. Because, like, not so much with like illegal drugs, but I know that it's like obviously the tool is an epidemic, and you guys probably know about that. It's like a $250 fine if you get caught with that here. And probably every student I know who is the tools are, it's not illegal to use them under it. It's like cigarettes. Yeah. Oh. Right? You can smoke them when you're underage, you can't buy them. Yeah. So, but you can't have them at school. Yeah, yeah. and it's like no an epidemic. Yeah, I mean, I can't have them. Yeah, it's like an epidemic, though, and I feel like yeah. it like it would be fine, like, because you're not supposed to have it at school, like, call their parents, like, take it, like, tell them. But I feel like the fine is, like, where it kind of pushes it, because then, like, the parents can't really help that, but like you know, a kid's not going to be paying like two hundred fifty dollars. So then, sometimes the fines make people change. Like yeah. I mean, it even happens at the mall. We find people for like trash violations, mm -hmm. and they stop making trash yeah. violations after they get a couple fines. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's more 
the hope of deterring the future of yeah. another fine. Um, and, and then you pass that word along. You're like, oh shit, I got fined two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Like, don't do this. You'll get fined two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah. Parents would be so mad. Like, mm -hmm. that's a fine is way better than prison. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> two hundred fifty dollars is way better than jail. Now you yeah. to go to your favorite college. All I'm trying to say is I understand like unneeded consequences consequences yeah. at the same time I think it's important that students know that you make one mistake and it could ruin you yeah. know you not maybe going to the college yeah. you wanted which yeah. in turn maybe you don't get to make the salary you make. I don't know mm -hmm. so I just yeah. think it's important that they also understand that yeah. I mean we all kind of dabbled I get it but it's yeah, Lindsay you can't yeah. say all sorry <laughs> we'll say we're back to the generalization yeah. yeah but I also think be mindful of who you're presenting to because yeah. I, I don't know about the rest of the mapping, but I, you know, I graduated in 2006. I can tell you uh, names of at least 20 people I know that mm -hmm. maybe got, got high in high school, was yeah. a big deal, maybe drank in high school, but then went on to do ecstasy and meth mm -hmm. and heroin and died by overdose. And so we don't live in a day and age where it's like the 60s and you might smoke a little and then you know go to a concert. Yeah. These, these drugs now are laced and people don't know and they're becoming addicted and yeah. they're, di they're dying, like they're seeing death. And mm -hmm. so um, just consider that. I don't. Yeah. I think there's merit to what you're presenting, mm -hmm. but definitely like dig deep and flush it out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. We no appreciate problem. you, kids.